He's deserved it for a bit, man. Like, he has been a top Zerg in the world for, uh, I would say, almost, uh, over a year and a half, he's been one of the top Zergs in the world in practice. Sure. But, uh, you know, he's he hasn't been able to deliver quite that well. He's in pretty well in team leagues and stuff. But here he is. He's in the round of eight, Tasteless. It's his time to shine. All right, here are two players now. We are moments away from starting this best of five. We already have one player in the round of four. That's going to be Symbol. By the way, really good job to Symbol. Talk about a guy who did his homework. Mm -hmm. He came in so prepared. Oh. So uh, our map lineup is going to be Daybreak, uh, Belshir Vestige, Akalon Flats, Neo Planet S, and Whirlwind. Wow, look at that map pool. Yeah. This is actually a really interesting map breakdown. Like, I'm not used to opening up Daybreak uh, in Epic PDC Best of Fives, but that's going to be fun. Uh, of course, Belshir Vestige is going to be one that Curious really wants to take home. Uh, Aqualon Flats is a map that Parting has shown that he's super comfortable on against Zerg. He's very, very good on that map. And then, of course, that, that Planet S, that's the map for Immortal Pushes. And then closing out in Whirlwind, that's going to be, if it goes to game five, then obviously Curious is going to be a very happy Zerg. And also, as you guys can see here, beyond the 9 and 15 minute marker, 9 to 15 minute marker, uh, overall these guys are fairly even. Yeah. With success rates um, yeah. here. So, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun, and I think we can blame a lot of them. Uh, the, the wins there for Parting uh, in that part of the game is probably on <laughs> the, uh, that very special Immortal Sentry timing push. That's right. Well. I'm actually really excited about this series, Tasteless. I hope it can be as good as our last series. Our last series was pretty dramatic. Mm. Yeah. I wonder, are we going to get a Protoss into that round of four? Are we going to get a Terran into that round of four? Obviously, there's going to be Zergs. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, at least one. Yeah. So, Curious and Parting here. Um, going at it on Daybreak. These guys have had a good amount of time to prepare. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, the best you know, PVZ builds we could see, and the ZVP builds we could see, are going to be coming from these two right now. Remember, it's the last Wings of Liberty, GSL, Kodas, last, I mean, so we're essentially ending this series that is Wings of Liberty. That's right. And starting the next one that's going to be Heart of the Swarm. So everybody wants this. You lose here, you go straight to playing Heart of the Swarm. Yeah, you're done. You're yeah. done Wings of Liberty after this. All right, guys, get ready. We've already seen a symbol get out. Now who's going to move on between these two? Will it be Curious or Parting here in the round of eight? GSL Codex. Uh, in the upper right, we've got our Zerg player. Finally here in the round of eight for the first time. How far can he go? He is... Starting. Is he chewing gum? He say. might be. He might be. Could be chewing his tongue too. Hard to say. Well, I know this other guy wears glasses, Tasteless. So yeah. Who is he? In the bottom left, we have the WCS World Champion. He is. SK Telecom T1. Party. No gum in his nope, mouth. No gum. Not a gum chewer here. No. I actually haven't tried chewing gum yet. When I play, I'm actually not much of a gum guy. Every now and then, I'll, I'll chew a piece of gum when I play, but it's not. I'm no, I don't. I don't do it on purpose. All right, we actually have a pool right after Overlord here from Curious. It's a. It's it's pretty good overall. What it's going to do is uh, make Parting a little bit nervous about exactly how he has to wall in, because sometimes you go for this pool and then you make like two links. Sometimes you go for this pool, and make six links. So Parting has to be careful and ready and have the minerals banked and scout correctly to know if he has to actually do and a full wall. You can even do some sneaky stuff like like uh, bank up some larva, pull some yeah. larva, yeah. and then only make two legs and then have drones make it at the same time. Yes. You know, you can actually do stuff like that. Yeah. In fact, it's uh, watching uh, an old StarCraft 1 trick. It's a little bit different in StarCraft 2, a larva function. But uh, an old trick is to watch how the eggs pop up. They pop up together alone, how quickly yeah. after each other, because it takes Very time to switch smart. keys. But anyways, we do have six lings on the way. So uh, this is going to be annoying for Parting, as we see here. He can't make his nexus right now, and he's doing a full wall in. So this is going to make it, yeah, Curious's base is going to be a little bit later, but so is Parting's. 
This is a good way to control the tempo, especially yeah. considering that um, Harding has done that Immortal Sentry push so much that mm -hmm. he's normally had streamlined, and now this makes it a little bit difficult. He has to get to the same place if he wants That's to do true. it in a different order. He'd have to improvise a little bit if he wants to do that. In fact, he's getting the gas before his expand here, and uh, in fact, getting his Cybernetic Core as well. So, uh, very interesting what we see here. Of course, the Overlord knows this. So, Parting's entire build is so far off of what he wanted to open with that it's very annoying. Really good preparation here from Curious. Yep, but it's a good response from Parting, to be honest, because if you just go into gasless, like, try to wait and grab your Nexus, you don't have anything working out for you. But as far as the timings of the buildings that Parting has here, he can still put on aggression. He's just not going to have as big an economy behind it. But at the same time, Curious's economy is hurt as well. Is it possible he could throw up a Stargate here? Yeah, it is. some aggression it's, here? It's possible. Uh, gas is going to be pretty I think, late. I think a Stargate would be a great idea because, you know, he's getting his tech, like, in any sort of funky game, a Stargate's a good idea because it gives you so much scouting, it gives you harassment. And when both of you are messed up a little bit, doing even a little bit of harassment normally goes a little bit further. Well, this throws you more and more, the Zerg in this case, this throws the Zerg more and more and more off mm -hmm. um, of the balance that he wanted to keep there from before. I think it is going to be a Stargate, Stargate as well. I think that's what that pylon is for right there, too. So the top part? Yeah, I think that's going to be a Stargate right there, Void Ray into Phoenixes. We'll see. And there, there it, is. it is. Yeah. Not surprised. Wow. Uh, more surprised with where he put it than uh, <laughs> that he went for it. He actually put it behind his minerals. But uh, that's fine. Not a huge deal. So, looks like this game's going to normalize a little bit at least. Sure, sure. Things are going to slow down. Yeah. Now, with the, Dead bit. with the Stargate, if uh, Curious doesn't scout it, then obviously he can take a lot of damage. But it matters what party wants to go for. Does he go for the Void Ray and immediately start killing Overlords? Or does he pull... Uh, like three void rays or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could always do a crazy all or in like pool that. Or pull phoenixes as well. Yeah. Pull phoenixes. That's that's the more common thing to pull. But uh, you know, there's there's all sorts of different variations that you can do. And in fact, it will be phoenix. So he'll probably pull those. Pull it up to four, most likely. Sure. And nice trap. Really, really yeah. well done there. Super well done. He's just trying to put on a little bit of pressure with these two stalkers because. If you put on a little bit of pressure with the Stalkers while you're going for Stargate play, uh, it pays huge dividends because, A, you can actually go ahead and injure Queens. You can force a lot more uh, links, which means that any drone kills you get are more significant, things like that. So uh, it was a good idea, but curious way to be smart in how he walked it. Now nah, there's a high chance he's going to try to take a third up here. Yeah. As he does this, just the Phoenixes are going to be out here harassing, annoying the Zerg. Good opportunity to take the center left starting location. And just go from there. And he's doing a good job here cleaning up a lot of these overlords. Plus yeah. one attacking from Protoss is on the way. He's continuing to crank out some gateways. Yeah. There's also the possibility he might do some kind of timing. We know Parting's very good with his timings. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's going to be a third, okay. Mm -hmm. It's it, it makes a lot of sense. It's hard to do Stargate timings, to be honest. Well, now Two base it, is, it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but a lot of people may be wondering what, why did he uh, show the Phoenixes so early? And that's with the Overlords in his base like that. Curious basically saw everything that's going on anyways, and you can extrapolate that there's not a Robo behind the minerals, but instead of Stargate. <laughs> so uh, just showing them immediately. He wants an overreaction, which he's he's kind of getting. Because he's only made two Phoenixes, he stopped there. And we actually have for, uh, right now, four Curious. Hold on, I want to use this new tab, Structures tab. He has four Spores. So, pretty well done. All right, uh, good little positioning there. Not entirely clear when he's going to make that Nexus. Give it a Twilight Council, huh? Mm -hmm. So, I guess that makes sense since he had to get that Forge out so early. Yeah. I wonder if he's going to go for a, you know what this definitely could be? It could be one of these plus two blink timing uh, cancels like we sure. saw from Creator. Sure. Uh, I d oh, no, it's not going to be that. Never mind. It's going to say that would be kind of an interesting one to cancel a, cancel a third base on this map. But he is making the uh, robotics uh, support. So By the way, gonna be I going to be going Colossus. I got to say, um, curious. Definitely held off the Phoenixes with the bare minimum mm -hmm. that he needed. 
Some Zergs will make way too many spore crawlers, which essentially means you kill drones anyways. Yeah. Well, he does have a spire on the way, so this is this is normalizing very well. Sure. Nice little wall there at the third base. Curious already up to 72 drones. Also, Curious already taking a fourth base here. Mm -hmm. It's the right thing to do. <laughs> Oh my god, I almost spat <laughs> hot water out of my nose. Yeah. Um, it's the right thing to do, right? Do the right thing, guys. Yeah, take that fourth base. Don't be trying to attack three bases, lots of roaches. Don't bully people. Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of lings now in the middle of the map. And plus what attack's about to finish here. Do you think he's going to try to force a, some kind of cancel? I don't think it's going to work if he does, yeah, by the way. They, he's not going to be able to get anything done. He's made a bunch of lings, but all these are going to do for him is map control and threatening things like this. But look at that, that Sim City that we have from farting. Absolutely not being broken by lings. Curious would have to go into roaches, by which point he would have anti-roach as well. But at least now he does see a Colossus out here. Yep, that gives him a much better idea. By the way, 17 mutas on the way. Wow, that is, is such a good choice here. You know, it's, of course, we do have Blinken plus two on the way, which can make it a little bit more scary, but there's not that many Phoenixes out, so the Phoenixes actually don't matter against the mutas. But there are Colossi, so in this type of situation, if he gets in there, kills a decent amount of probes, and just uh, it starts making spines and gets his macro going off four bases, it's going to be very hard for party. And Parting's going to have to decide, do I do a base trade or do I try to go up to High Templars? Oh. So, you know, the force field's a little bit sloppier than I'm used to. Bye-bye, Phoenix. And surprise, Parting, he's got a lot headed towards your way. And these expansions are basically naked. There's no cannons yeah. here to cover them. Uh, Stalker's here to defend, but not enough. Uh, the Phoenix does come in to try to help out a little bit. Does do a lot of damage, but will be taken out quite quickly. And Blink finishes, and that is very important. It'll help out quite a bit, but a lot of these probes are going to go down as that Blink cooldown is, is happening. Yep, the uh, probe's now retreating, uh, and as you can see, he beelines out of there and goes to regroup. We have the Zerg center middle base uh, finished, mm -hmm. and the bottom right base on the way, and more mutas continue to be cranked out here. Yeah, his macro is going to get out of control. 90 drones, Tasteless. 20 mutas out with many more on the way. In fact, he's even making more drones above the 90, which is really smart. If you can have up around 100 drones, sometimes even as high as 110, then you can mine for a little bit and then make spine crawlers. Yep, and exactly because you'll, you'll right. Bank Super extra. smart. Yeah, like when you first hit with a big clump of mutas, that is the one time Protoss absolutely can't attack you. They yeah. can't do it. Like, if they move out right as you're making the mutas, that's a time. But right now is the only time they can't. So to make those extra drones is fantastic by Curious. Nice targeting here by Party. Uh, by uh, Curious, excuse me. Yeah, good and micro by Party. Huh? Some pretty solid defense so far. And he is going Templar Archives. So this could go very long, or he might just go up to High Templars and it could still become a base trade. Now he's, gonna, he's going double Spire right now. So he's going to have that greater Spire uh, eventually here. Have some mm -hmm. sick upgrades on his air army. Yes. And I, I want to echo what you said earlier, Tosis, because it's so true. I mean, it, it, right when you hit him with mutas, they can't attack you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you so definitely have to build up a base. bit more. You have to get more defenses. You have to get a huge amount of stalkers so that you're sure that you'll win a straight-up engagement. And here's what you were talking about as well, Artos. This is just putting down all these spine crawlers. So he had a ton of drones, mined a bunch of minerals. Now he can actually give up the supply, turn into spines. Mm -hmm. uh, really smart. Yeah. And, I mean, his, his economy is really great. Look at this. Even though he's making a ton of spines at a time, and even spores as well, he still has plenty of minerals, plenty of gas. He's spreading it everywhere. This is... And the thing is, how do you break through that? Are you just going to attack into that with your stalkers? That's going to be very difficult, especially with uh, Infestor Tech on the way, great upgrades for all your units, a lot of lings, a lot of mutas in there. He does have two of the Colossi, which can do kind of siege it, but he can pick those off very easily as well. All right, Muta's now coming back. And, uh, you know, look, if you look at how long Zerg's been maxed out here, this is going to be very difficult for Party to recover from. Yeah. He's almost out of time. Oh, nice, and even the lanes in here, which, by the way, are incredibly expendable. Yeah. He can free up some supply that way while damaging some of those stalkers, keeping the stalker number down. Mm -hmm. And air upgrades are out of control right now. 
That's, yeah. It's going to be so hard for Party to leave home. Yeah. I think Curious has played really, really well from start to finish. Curious is playing a magnificent game. He yeah. Truly, truly, truly is. Everything he's doing, I love, and I think he's just doing it all perfectly. Uh, we do have Parting, though. He's got extremely solid defense. He has high Templars of Psy Storm at this point. So he's not... Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. oh God, that's exactly what he needs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is not Heart of the Storm. Those things are not just going to regenerate in two seconds. Yeah. That, those aren't going to be very easy to attack with. In fact, he's moving out. He may have decided, but that's enough damage he's on those He's him up enough. Yeah. You leave now, a he, couple he, High Templars at home, those can't really attack again very easily. It's very dangerous. All right. Uh, now, he, there are ways to avoid the spine crawlers here with Blink. Um, but, well, actually, I didn't, I didn't read yet spine crawlers down there. I take that back right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's got spines everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to check structures. Look at how awesome this new observing is. He has 34 spines right now. I don't even have to count Damn. Anymore. Making my job easy. So we yeah. have some good size storms, just damaging the mutas. And that's what you want to do uh, against muta. If you damage them enough, they can't come in anymore. They have to wait a really long time. And uh, suddenly, you'd start killing massive amounts of mutas uh, without them really doing any damage. So he's doing a good job working up to that area. All right, uh, he's moving out now with his small army. And there could be an interception here. Nice, he backs out here. Only one mute is shot down. The second one almost picked off. And no, Curious has also scouted the fact that uh, now it does look like Party's going to finally take his fourth base. But really, Curious is light years out of his opponent. I mean, it's going to be a, a, a real um, time-consuming, uh, you know, dramatic game here if Party's going to reverse what's going on right now. Yeah. Curious has played brilliantly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think this game is going to go super, 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 super long paces. i got to agree with you, Artosis. Because even now, uh, these mutas, look at this. They're still doing damage, sure. But they don't matter anymore, really. He's just going to deal as much damage as he can and eventually lose them. Because he doesn't really need them. They're, they're going to become less and less cost efficient. But through using them like this, he's built up to exactly what you want on this map, which is a billion spine crawlers and uh, Broodlord death ball attacks. So, and not just that, he has great upgrades for the Broodlords already because of the units he chose. So, yeah, I mean, the only way to, to see this game go forward is that uh, it, it becomes super long. Because yeah. you're not going to kill Parting very easily. He's getting everything. You know, he's, got, he's about to have the mothership. He's getting his charge Whoa. right now. He's getting another forge. This he has to go super long. Smeetus Mothership is now out. And, uh, yeah, we're going to see that Broodlord tech enter in here. Now, this is exactly what Protoss needs to do, is uh, start coming out here with Warp Prisms and trying to harass everywhere. There's a lot of spines and a spore around that, uh, around that spire. Doesn't seem like he was fully aware of the fact that those are actually spines making over there. There's no way yeah. for them to actually get that spire. Yeah, he's probably barely even watching that Warp Prism right now. He's just drawing the mutas around and the mutas will clean this up so still being very useful and that's gonna be into that warp prism now here's one thing that could occur guys is the zerg could mine up so much of the map uh because he got the curious got so much of the map early on that if uh, parting survives for like let's say the next uh, 20 minutes mm -hmm. then zerg's mined out yeah. you can't do anything i i want to point out one other thing too tasteless sure uh that was actually really tricky. He surrounded his normal spire that was upgrading with spines and spores like you would your greater spire. Parting hasn't seen the greater spire. I'm pretty sure he thinks that the greater spire hasn't started yet. He's waiting for an upgrade to finish to get it. So he has actually no idea that Broodlords are morphing right this moment. And that that's uh, something you kind of need to know about. Sure. Uh, he's probably just freeing up supply right now. Nope, he's not. Well, now he's going to. He's starting to send units all over the place. And you just come in. They do want to get this mothership. Oh, hitting it, hitting it hard. Nice uh, storms there. Yeah. All right, these units really have no use anymore. Yeah, they're they're pretty worthless. Maybe chase down warp prisms. That's about it. Only thing they're really good for. Look at how many spines. Thank God. I got to check. He's about to have 54 spines <laughs> and 11 spores. And wow. this is going to trigger, I think, what could be carrier play here. Yeah. With some Void Rays for Party. And in fact, he's getting, uh, yeah, he's he's absolutely getting ready for carrier play. So 
you know, he's going to have to go into Sky, Sky Toss because this type of ground army against what he's facing, never, ever going to win. Curious would have to gift wrap his entire army for parting to to get a win with ground army here. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, nice uh, storm there. And he sees the Brood Lords. He's Ooh. targeting down this hat. He's going to run for it after he gets it down. Yeah. All right, some and bundles and beautiful. Good recall. Very solid. Nicely done. Cleans up the uh, Mutas. Yeah, that's it for Mutas. Now, where do we go from here? Curious had a serious bankroll of a, almost 4,000 minerals and a little bit over 2,000 um, Vespian gas. Mm -hmm. Parting uh, is much lower, and he's also only at 168 supply. By the way, you know how I was talking earlier about how I feel like Curious sometimes in the late game gets you know, impetuous and doesn't really play the late game in the superior way that it's possible to? Well, this game, I'm definitely going to have to retract that because he's playing it just so well. The way he's defended everything. He's got spores and spines absolutely everywhere. He's got more spines and spores than we normally ever see, 50 and 10 even after losing some. This looks like it should be symbol right now. Yeah, exactly. He's, you know? he's basically playing a, a perfect supreme late game in Wings of Liberty, Zergris Protoss. So, yeah. uh, you know, that that situation where I was like, well, I, I feel like Parting's really going to like that late game. Uh-uh, not here. Not against this. But he is going into that Sky Toss, that MC kind of, kind of is so does, super yeah, good at. Pioneered yeah. the way on. So we'll see. That if, is a uh, lot of brood leaves. <laughs> That is a lot of rhythms. It's like a sea of fish. <laughs> now he's going to keep pushing forward here with the um, spine crawlers and the and the the brood lords. Mm -hmm. And what can eventually happen is he can push that fourth uh, center left base. That's kind of a positional base too. Yeah, we do have a lot of voids being created. There are 17 infestors out though. Infestors super get good against void rays. They clump up. They're going to take a lot of damage. Uh, even the Infested Terrans will do pretty well against them, despite the uh, lack of upgrades nowadays. All right. Uh, setting some changelings out here. Just trying to clear up the way. Doesn't want any energy on those uh, Overseers. Yeah. Because if you suddenly realize that you've them. killed a bunch, yeah. If you, I mean, that can just change the entire game if suddenly you have no detection against the Mothership. I'm just making sure that that can't happen. All right, he's slowly pushing forward. Nice storms here. Is that enough, though? Well, do we have? We do have enough for a vortex right now. Yeah, in fact, almost two. Not quite, though. Has three archons, so wouldn't be the absolute best vortex, but it's still vortex completely game changing. More and more voids on the way. How many have, voids are out right now? We have eight, about to be eleven, and good upgrades on them too right now. Few storms over here. No. Well, this looks like we have what about uh, 18 broodlords actually. Yeah, that's quite a good broodlord army. It's got to be careful though because if he can, uh, I I feel like we need to see some carriers. By the way, I I got to agree. We I need that work. range of the carriers actually. All right, he's engaging. And here we go. The void look race the, coming in. Look at the broodlord spread. It's really good. Wow, that's a that is a masterful vortex right there. Getting quite a few, but you can't really get anything in there. All right, uh, he's storming now, hitting these four brood lords down here at the bottom. The, oh, the, oh, hold on a second, he's canceling now, backing up. All right, uh, okay, now the, the brood lords are still out. It's not clear how much more of the ground army there's left. There's still a lot of uh, void rays here. Yeah. And a not lot. a lot of anti-air. Really well done, actually, by both sides there. Uh, parting, busting through better than I thought he would. No kidding. And, but we do have 16 corruptors on the way. Is the Broodlord army is still quite huge, but with no more ground army being made by Parting right now, uh, you know, these Broodlords, not really all that effective. They're going to be useful in clearing out High Templars and killing, like, buildings and, well, whatever ground army there is, but overall not that useful against mass How many spines do we have now? Well, right now we have 42. 42, okay. Still quite a few. This is a lot of Void Rays, though. Also, as far as investors go, what, we got about six out now, not a ton, with yeah, 15 boy rays, so. We heard a lot of feedbacks in that battle. So yeah, yeah. That's definitely something, he's making more broods. This is actually a big mistake. 
He does not need more. The only thing he doesn't need right now is more Broodlords, I think. What he needs <laughs> to be afraid of right now is those Void Rays, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like instead of Broodlords, if he just made pure Infestor... Okay, there you go. A ton of Infestors in the way. A ton of Spores as well. And that is exactly what he needs to do. With a lot of Spore uh, Crawlers, the Void Ray is not going to be nearly as impactful in any battles. All right, Turtle Enough over here now. And, uh, man, I mean, Curious is going for the long run. I got to say, the one mistake Curious made, he actually let Protoss take the top center. That's a big mistake. Yeah, if he holds that, that's... That party is fine. Yeah, exactly. Party can actually make this into, like, a, you know, a Cold War yeah. for this game because he's going to get that. It's going to be tough for Zerg to get the bottom. Totally. It's it, it's so important, those two bases in Supreme Light Game CVP. So, so, so important. All right, um, looks like he's going to peek over here with these overlords. And he's got, okay, perfect. He's got stalkers down there that can blink away. And the push is beginning. I'd make a lot more cannons over there if I were him. <laughs> I think uh, that base probably not going to make it. <laughs> well, here we go. Oh, my God. Great vortex, but he can't put Archons in there because it's just over the uh, sky. Now we do have some side storms going out. Voidery is pushing forward for he a moment. He can storm right when they pop out of the... Uh, yeah, yeah. He uh, can abs, and in fact, that's what he's going for here. Beautiful nice side storms. storms going down. Really beautiful. But... Uh, it doesn't really lose any Corruptors. Does some good snipes and pushes back. 200 supply to 157. Yeah, in the meantime, he did blink over here. Did some damage. This is not a, a big deal either, though, really. Losing those drones is not going to really affect Curious. It's going to give him more army supply, basically. Yeah. <laughs> he has a big enough bank he doesn't care to remake. Nice uh, feedback there, as well as a side storm. Yeah, it looks like eventually this is going to be wiped out. It does not appear as so a party can hold this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Parting's going to have to back up. That's okay to lose this carrier. right now. Yeah, he's, he's got to actually get his carriers out, get his army together on the proper hockeys, and get ready uh, for basically the control of his life. Because he is going to have to... Basically, the carriers are going to have to zone everything out so that he can actually land good size storms. Yeah. Control the battle with that. If in a battle actually happens, the Void Rays are going to be the most important part. Uh, but during the little micro back and forth parts, it's all about the Templars and uh, the Carriers supporting those Templars. Now with this creep coming up, this is this is getting scary, man. Yeah, um, this is it's kind of like you know the blob. I mean, um, Carriers is slowly just you know pushing that creep across the map. If he gets the creep up to the top center and bottom center, it's pretty much game over unless Parting is a wizard. Yeah, uh, with those carriers and side storms, as you said already. Well, uh, a big issue that we see here also, Parting's bank is dried up. He's he's just now started his mothership. He's still got a very scary, very good army. How many high Templars? He has five. So he's, I mean, his army is still capable of, of winning battles. But, I mean, Curious has so much bank, and he hasn't really committed to trying to get one more base, which is really what both of them need. If you yeah. can hold one more base, it's I am, I am a bit a surprised, Curious, to not just push Creep down to the bottom and take that. I think he actually has the... I think he's just starting to. He's definitely got the manpower to, 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 to deny the top. I don't know about control the top, but at least deny it. Poke it in there with his freaking huge army. Well, from here, what Curious really wants to do is just kill off any units he can for Parting, because Parting's getting so low on his economy. Uh, so Curious just is trying to be cost efficient with this this group. If he cannot lose his Infestors, then it's going to be magnificent. Like the Infestors over time are going to gain a lot of value. But that's that's what Parting's trying to do here with these High Templars. He needs a really cost efficient like slaughter an army of Curious because even though Curious has a nice bank, he can't remake his whole army. It's impossible. You kill that whole army once and have a decent amount of years left, you can win as Protoss. All right, this is a pretty scary death ball here. And a good fungal would be insane. He does not manage to pull it up. Storming now on those Corruptors. They back up. And I got to say, so far, this is more cost efficient by far for Curious. We do have the Brew Lords coming forward right now. And they're dealing a lot and of damage to these ground a lot of fungals there a lot. on those Void Rays. That's going to be a game changer. That's it. Yeah. That's it. It, 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 it. It's over. <laughs> And wow. really well played. From start to finish, uh, Curious just played too damn well. Yeah. Beautifully played game. Uh, 
you know, Harding gonna kill off these Corruptors, but he can just fly back with his Brood Lords. He's remaking Corruptors and Infestors, and there's no way for Harding to replace what he lost. Just absolutely no way. He is, in fact, dead. Yeah, it should be a few more minutes, and then he'll tap out here. Uh, I think it's gonna be even quicker than that. When these new Corruptors pop out, what are you gonna do against that? You know, what we saw there, by the way, because it was a hard battle to follow or comment, to be honest. No kidding. Uh, there were so many broodlings and so many brood lord shots that the High Templars couldn't get enough Psy Storms off to weaken the Infestors enough. I mean, not the Infestors, the Corruptors, Corruptors. enough for the, the flying units of Harding to just kill everything. Yeah. Which is what you're trying to do uh, in this matchup here. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because uh, the angle itself for the engagement was kind of tough, too. Nobody really had a lot of room for ground spellcasters at all. Yeah. Um, well, he's just going to remax out here, 164 to 117. Notice, finally, uh, Curious' uh, income has gone down, completely wiping out these carriers. Yeah. And look at that. Little snipes like that. Parting is hemorrhaging units here. And uh, yeah. you just, uh, at 114 supply and two mining bases, as we see, cannot get them back, so you can't lose even one unit. At it's funny because there's no way for Party to know exactly what the supply of his opponent is. Mm. But I mean this is just a pretty dire situation. Also yeah. he did manage to get creep over there at the bottom center. We don't have a shot of it, but well what Parting is trying to do is to have enough of an army to have a chance to have a super cost efficient situation. That's not uh. Alright, here we go. And this is so, so smart. Dropping that creep to actually burrow his spore crawlers. They do burrow a lot quicker than spine crawlers. So that's going to give him a lot of bonus anti-air here. Going to push right through. This Nexus is dying so fast. Uh, okay, Vortex that's, there that's on the... That's uh, a beautiful Vortex. Yeah, but there's no Archons there. They that's can... true, but the Storm. Ah, uh, yeah, the Storm. If he can hit the Storms just right here, uh, then he still does have a chance. He needs to kill those off, so his flying units went everything. Uh, doesn't quite do it. That's too bad. Yeah, it's, it, that was a tough one. Now these corruptors well, just picking off everything. I mean, there's just not much he can do. He's getting slowly but surely bullied back here. And, um, you know, that's going to open up his base down here in the center um, left. Okay, he's going to try to take the bottom. I don't know how effective this is going to be. How many spine and spore crawlers do we have in this game, Artos? All right. Well, right now we have... Uh, 25 spores, only 29 spines. Only left. 29 spines. Yeah, not so many. It's okay though. There's not many ground units left over. Yeah, you know, uh, the one thing that he's relying on is that Curious has been stuck on just five base. Funny thing to say, stuck on five base, but it's 42 minutes in. He's been on five base for a long time, so he knows that Curious at this point definitely not. But how max. many minerals does he have left over here? For who? I mean, Curious, in, uh, is, yeah, Curious is a, almost dropped. Yeah, I was going to say, he's almost out. Yeah. But with this many spines and spores and the way he's pushing about it, I still don't feel like there's much of any chance here for Parting. Okay, he's, got, uh, he's got an okay flying unit count. Like, he's got 11 voids and carriers what, what and is up, shit, but What's up with this season and having, like, the most epic games ever, you know? Well, this is the end of Wings of Liberty. This, yeah. this game has been figured out very, very well. Of course, it's still evolving. Uh, very slowly at this point because there's very few players left playing it, but uh, Yeah, it's just This is how good people are. It's so hard to kill it's people crazy. because everyone knows what to do All right, so uh, there's really not much that he can do about this little force of Protoss units that are expendable But also taking out things here and there and let's yeah. say that a parting does up uh, pull off a miracle You know Yeah, um, it's it's, uh, it's gonna be a hard miracle <laughs> All right, but, going for the infestation pit I remember the Zerg is not actually even have this gas really moving. Yeah, Curious isn't even really paying too much heat to this. He doesn't actually need most of the stuff up here. I mean, that infestation pit actually was important, but overall, like, he could lose a hatch. If he keeps the hive, he's pretty good, you know? Sure, sure. All right, well, party, let's see what he's got. <laughs> now, uh... It looks like uh, Partying's gas income is actually superior. If you watch the gas uh, rising over here in the top right, uh, right there, uh, it's it's definitely better for Partying. So that's another thing to keep into consideration here. Yeah, it's like you said, uh, you, our Zerg player find out first. Yeah, he did take the we're in that situation. Quick. By the way, we're about to hit the 45-minute marker here for this game. Yeah. Uh, curious, though, you know, with all the spines and spores up at that 12 o'clock base, 
that's so hard to break and he's doing this push once again with the overlords it's such an intelligent way to go about it and with how quickly spores do burrow this is very very tough for him to actually break through because he has to make flying units you can't make ground units against this type of army and that just i mean you you go into those spores in the range of that fungals corruptors spores and spines well, there's just such an unforgiving amount of defense there. Yeah, yeah. Now, he did mine a, a little bit of extra gas there before he pulled away. Now, let's see what he can do up here. Um, note, it's going to be hard for the Zerg casters to defend the 12 o'clock location. <gasps> oh! oh, almost. If he could just kill off a flock of corruptors like that, he could definitely still win. But that's like, the thing is, Curious knows that. and. He's just never going to let that happen. What he is going to let happen, though, is all his bases are going to die to one Zell and one Stalker. Uh, all right, here we go. The Void Rays. See, the Void Rays is actually targeting things down to minimize damage, but at the same time, not allowed to charge up because of this. Nice uh, Vortex. He might have gotten, actually, oh, very, two very good Vortex. He's actually sucking up most of that army, avoiding the Infestors, backing up. Is he going to get those Storms off that he needs? He needs to get those Storms off. He needs off. to, and, uh... Almost falling inside well, there. Oh, I thought there was much more in there. Yeah, it, the first <laughs> one had way more, I guess. Well, you know, Parting is still being very uh, frugal <laughs> with his Great units. Great word choice. Yeah, he's he's doing a very good job of just picking things off here and there. He's 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 actually being the mobile one with this funny arm. Yeah, he is melting a lot of this defense, guys. Ah! Oh! And look at this, the Broodlord starting to pick up High Templars. That is the Fungals issue here. coming down. And the High There's Templars. on the ground to defend. One High Templar under cloak. I don't see it. No, he, no, he lost he it. He lost all the High Templars, so Excuse that's... Me. See, that's the problem. Okay, against the this. Fungals that are what's going to be so strong here. Yeah. And the Infested Terrans, of course, as well. That's right. Wow, i got to say, the game went on a lot longer than I expected, or I think you expected, Artosis. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, Parting is, shows just how amazing he is in that late game. GG. But with that type of spine and score pushing and just being patient, there's not a whole ton that Protoss can do in that situation. Parting yeah. did every single thing he could think of, and uh, it turned out not to be enough. Curious just got into a good position that it was, it became almost impossible against the style he was playing. Damn. We're off to a good start here for the second half of uh, today's round of eight. Dude, man. We're off to a great Jeez. start to the round of eight. Well, um, man, Curious could definitely pull this off. He played a lot better than I'm used to seeing him play. No, that was the best late game play I've seen from Curious. Ever. Ever. Curious. Easily. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I had so many spores. Did you see those Overlords dropping creep? Oh, my God. I just burrowed, and he was dead. It's a good job. Pat, pat, pat. The coach actually stands over him with like red eyes, like a crazy puppeteer, and is like, kill him, <laughs> and leaves the booth. All right. Um, well, that's, well, that's a strong win for Curious, because now we're going on Belcher Vestige, and that's okay. going to be hard. Yeah, this is a great map for Curious. He wins this one. It's going to be really difficult for Party to recover. Whoa. He didn't win three games in a row. Uh-oh, the jacket comes off. That's when you know you're serious. Yeah. Take off that jacket. That's it. That's it. Party's going to town. Leave it to me. <laughs> well, he's the only one, man. Here we go, Tasis. The game has started. Yep. And we're going to find out if Parting starts to engineer a comeback here and even this out. Or if Curious is going to be that much closer to closing this out. I'm Tasis with me as Artosis. We're Tastosis, the casting archon. Here, uh, bringing you the GSL code S. In the bottom right, we've got our Zerk player with the best late game and gameplay we have ever seen. He is... Stati, curious. Curious. Oh, he's chewing the gum a little bit faster. Tosis, that's probably a new stick. <laughs> in the upper left... He's got left, more flavor. Yep, and he's got more flavor. In the upper left, we have our Protoss player, the world champion. He is... SK Telecom Kiwa. Hot yeah. All right. Parting obviously wants a GSL win. Definitely a player that we expect to eventually take one. I feel like uh, the same can be said for a lot of the players in the top eight this season, where they're just they're so world class. It's like, well, damn, this guy's got to win a big tournament. Like, this guy's really good, but this other guy's really good too. <laughs> Uh, and look at this, once again, a pretty quick pool here from Curious. Yep. And 
We'll have to see if part, what party wants to do about this. Like, are we going to have to see that wall in once again, which is very annoying for him. We'll see. But I like that he's doing this type of thing, as you said, Tasteless, to mess up the build order of parting so he can't hit his famed immortal push. Uh, yeah. He can still do an immortal push, but it won't be exactly the same thing that he's done a quadrillion times. Yes. Um, so as you can see, he's going to be forced to do that wall in here. And I, I love this. I actually just love what Curious is doing. This is... Yeah. It's like we've never even really Look. talked about somebody doing this. Look huh. what he's making. Two drones, and two lanes. Two lanes. It's like what we talked about in the first yeah. game. You see, he, he actually set Parting up for this. So now Curious is going to have a much better economy than what Parting's planning on. And Parting's doing his full wall. His full wall in. So uh, Curious playing mind games with Parting, you know? That's... That's hard to I, do, too, because Harding's mind games are the best I've seen. I wouldn't be shocked if uh, Curious does this kind of mind game opener every every time here. Yeah. He just has a whole bunch of different builds to start out with some unusual stem, you know? Yeah. Uh, it would make sense. It's it's a great way to play a series. That's one of my reasons I love Squirtle so much. Just anyone that plans a series like that where they're going to show the same opening multiple times but do different things or maybe even the same thing, threatening different things, you know? Sure. Uh, it just that type of trickery is so great. All right. Now uh, we have the probe over here. Just checking for the third, and he's going to see the drone. So party's going to have a pretty good reading. That's confirmed there when he sees it. The hatchery's actually planted. Mm -hmm. Now remember, because uh, party has to shift gears here and get uh, these additional structures out early before the nexus, uh, he gets his tech out here earlier. So I don't know. Do we see a stargate this time? Maybe. Uh, frankly, last time in uh, game number one between these two, the Stargate did almost nothing. Yeah, yeah, you know, he forced some spores, uh, he, he killed some overlords, killed maybe a, a drone or two, did some scouting. Uh, but he did only make the two phoenixes. I mean, it was a, it was a clever build based upon what Curious had forced him into with that weird opening that, once again, we're kind of seeing similarly here. But this time with double gas. All right. Um, Stalker now just going to chase out these lings. Stalking this ling, you might say? Yeah. Ling, though, going straight home. Give me your phone home. number. No. Well, you ever have a stalker following you like this while you're trying to drive home late at night and you live alone, uh, drive to a police station. Yeah, that's very smart. Um, well... You know, he's doing a good job here. He's just kind of scoping out what exactly is going on. Again, Stargate in the same spot um, as in game one in the back. And with that rally, it's going to be what Phoenix's. What if we have the exact same game as before, <laughs> Tosis? But on a different map? Yeah. Well, there's, actually, no, there's no central spine location here, so that would be pretty hard. He has to get, like, 100 spine crawlers. <laughs> it's just... It, it, he's like, well, it, I did get over 50 last game. I guess I could do that. Time to set a record. Is he attacking his own... All right. Pick yeah. a side. Well, you got to show the hatchery. A little bit of a boss. dramatic queen right there. Yeah. Hitting the hatchery one second and larva injecting it. Not going to be a good mama queen. No. Um, <laughs> so he's going to go and get two more extractors. Warp gate almost done, as well as that phoenix. He's got the one. We'll have to see. Does he do something like a two phoenix opening again? Wouldn't that be interesting? So we have seen things like that in, uh, yeah. like in StarCraft 1, for instance. You open with... Uh, like Starport or Stargate, you're not necessarily making a lot of Corsairs or Wraiths. No. You might actually see one or two. It's actually pretty just good. Clean up some Overlords and be like, all right, the fear of flying things is in you. Or sometimes you can just send out one Corsair. Yeah. And then like stockpile four or five. Oh, yeah. You Corsair can do the, Reaver and they're like, the oh, God. <laughs> the double trickster move. Yep. Well, looks like he is web was actually good, actually good. And he was <laughs> like dropping these little nooks. Yeah. Everything dies. The R key, letter R keyboard, is actually just worn off because you hit that key so many times reloading <laughs> those scarabs. Yeah. All right, moving out with three. And, uh, yeah, four is a more common move out. But three is something that actually uh, the Kespa players do a bit more than the ESF players. So That's very this true. This definitely could be something that Parting picked up over there. And there's a few different things it does, interestingly. It's, uh, it's yes, a different sir. timing. It's quicker. Uh, it, it'll take two lifts to kill Queen, sure, but... Uh, they're less likely to have their spores up. Uh, they're going to have to get spores more quickly uh, than they would normally, so their drone count's going to be 